LeBron James is arguably the greatest basketball player to ever play the game, which has caused both of his sons, Bronny and Bryce James, to be in the basketball spotlight ever since middle school. Just because their father was dominating the league, in the public eye they've been perceived as a surefire lock to make the NBA for as long as we can remember. When Bronny was 10 years old, he was offered scholarships to several unnamed major colleges to play basketball when he graduated. But facts and actual statistics show that both Bronny and Bryce James will make the NBA, but fail terribly. So why is that? Well, this is a perfect place to start because it actually does start with all the attention both of them have gotten from such a young age because it's been a common problem throughout all of NBA history. Stephen Curry, Kobe Bryant, Devin Booker, Al Horford, Kevin Love, Clay Thompson, DeMontis Sabonis, Andrew Wiggins, Darius Garland, Jeremy Grant, and Jalen Brunson. These are all some of the best second generation players the game has ever seen. But what do they all have in common? Well, it's that their dads weren't very good in the league. As a matter of fact, all of their fathers were role players in the NBA and shared a combined zero all-star appearances between them. But I'd be lying if I said they were all just trash players. Del Curry was once sixth man of the year, Clay Thompson's father Michael once averaged 20 a game, and Arvida Sabonis is basically a basketball legend, but didn't play good in the NBA. But with the exceptions aside, most of the all-time great second generation players came from fathers who weren't great in the league, and that's no coincidence. And neither is the fact that when looking at legendary Hall of Fame players and their sons, it's not pretty. Luke Walton, David Stockton, Sharif O'Neal, Zaire Wade, Scottie Pippen Jr., and Marcus and Jeff Jeffrey Jordan are all maybe the worst second generation players of all time and it's directly correlated, which is major bad news for both Bronny and Bryce James. Because the better the former NBA player was, the worse it seems that their sons turn out to be. And it all has to do with one important key factor, their drive and dedication to the game. For example, if Zaire Wade never works out in the NBA, at the end of the day his father is still a multi-millionaire and he'll live a great life. But when Dwayne Wade was coming up and going through high school and college, he had no choice but to become an NBA superstar to get his family and his parents out of the bad situations they were in. If he didn't succeed, he would still be stuck in a bad neighborhood. Working hard every single day and making it to the league was met with the potential reward of saving his family and making a name for himself, which 90% of the time is the case with a lot of first generation players. They have something to fight for and a reason to work hard every single day. And I'm sure Zaire is a hard worker, but subconsciously, without him even knowing it, he doesn't have that same drive and that same all for nothing mentality that most others have. Because he has nothing that he's fighting for, his family are already has money, he already has the Wade last name, and no matter what happens, whether he fails or succeeds, he's still probably going to have the opportunities to get everything he's ever wanted. It's something that without a doubt occurs in these second generation players. And there's no better example of this than Michael Jordan's sons, Marcus and Jeffrey. As a matter of fact, they were so unmotivated and cared so much less about succeeding than their father did, that teammates and coaches said they were often unmotivated, and they just straight up gave up on basketball halfway through their college careers. On the surface, MJ's drive and motivation was drawn from wanting to be the best basketball player in the world. But it was more than that. It originally started with him wanting to make a name for himself, something that was never taught in these second generation players. Because like Wade, at the end of the day, Marcus and Jeffrey's father was still going to be a billionaire. And it almost seems that the more successful the father is, the less successful the son becomes. And seeing how Bronny and Bryce have one of the most successful NBA fathers of all time in every aspect of his life, this might be a problem. Sure, LeBron's a great father and it's clear that these two take the game serious and work hard. But there's just that instinct in the back of their mind telling them that it's all or nothing that just isn't there. So when put up against players who come from nothing, they're at a distinct disadvantage. Which takes us back to our first set of players. Now you may be thinking, well at the end of the day, some of these guys' dads were still millionaires too, but it's not the same. They weren't the best. They had the experience of playing in the league, but they weren't the best players on their team. They didn't get the most popularity, and they probably didn't make generational type of money, especially back then. It's as simple as this. The son of former NBA player Melvin Booker wasn't getting the same attention growing up that Shaquille O'Neal's son was. You see, think of all the starting spots that extra minutes of playing time, and the added fame and publicity that Sharif O'Neal was getting thanks to Shaq being his father, and everyone thinking he had the chance to have the same potential. I'm sure growing up Devin Booker's dad being a former NBA player did help him, but nowhere near in the same way. Which brings us back to Bronny and Bryce. The amount of publicity, exposure, and fame that these two have gotten from who their father is has been unheard of, and is without a doubt the most severe case to this day. And up until this point, the cracks in the armor are already starting to show. And it's been pretty apparent for years now that at least Bronny hasn't been as good as he was expected to. From a young age, fans have had the idea that he was supposed to follow his name and really become the next LeBron James. But it's been an uphill battle. LeBron James Sr. burst onto the high school basketball scene, averaging 18-6-4 and four as a freshman, while Bronny barely got any playing time thanks to playing on a team full of highly ranked seniors. As a sophomore, LeBron jumped up to averaging 25-7-6, and six, while Bronny tore his ACL and missed most of his second year. As a junior, LeBron James continued to dominate and became one of the most popular non-NBA players in the nation, while Bronny struggled to take on a leadership role 
and was still playing behind other highly ranked seniors on the team. Then finally, as a senior, LeBron was making the case for being the unanimous first overall pick that year. While this season, Bronny is currently ranked as the 32 overall recruit in his class. So it's clear they're nothing near the same, especially considering how he's currently a 6 foot 3 point guard. He was ranked as low as the 60s in his class a couple years back, so it's good to see that he's improving and moving up the boards. But even still, his game has holes in it. While he's proven to be an excellent on-ball defender and has similar athleticism to his father, while having a pretty consistent 3 point shot, his leadership, ball handling, and ability to take over games while being aggressive has been called into question. Which is the exact opposite of what you want to hear from someone trying to be an NBA point guard. It's why many scouts pretty unanimously agree that Bronny will be a late first round or even a second round pick, but they all also unanimously agree that he will definitely be making the NBA, which has never happened for a senior in high school who's ranked 32nd in the nation. That has everything to do with a statement LeBron James made, saying how playing with Bronny is on my bucket list. I would do whatever it takes to play with my son. It's not about the money at that point. And when you combine this with the fact that he has a player option for the 2024 season, the same year that Bronny would be eligible for the NBA, and it's said that he wants to play with him as long as his body can hold up, while also saying I definitely be looking at who's got first round picks in 2024, 2025, things of that nature, and saying that he'll sign with whatever team ends up drafting Bronny, it's not only put the ultimate pressure on him but also on whatever college he chooses to go to. With the way this has all been laid out and with James' current contract situation, it seems like he's looking for Bronny to be one and done and enter the 2024 NBA draft, and that really complicates the whole situation. This puts him in a situation where he feels like he has to succeed and break out and make a case to enter the draft in his first year. It puts his college in a weird spot too, because at the moment, he's not ready to be the star of any college team. But if he's made a starter and the team fails, it's on them. And if they bring him off the bench and there's no chance that he'll prove himself, then it's still also on them, which is making him a really tricky prospect. But either way, if he entered the 2024 NBA draft, the chances he gets drafted somewhere are still now extremely high thanks to that statement that LeBron let out. Any team in the league would jump on the opportunity to use a second round pick to draft Bronny for the opportunity to bring in LeBron. LeBron James on a smaller deal going forward. And because of this endless paradox, it's why I feel like he's one of the only top 100 recruits that have yet to pick a college. His master plan was to wait and break out this year so he'd be able to find a school that would be the perfect fit for himself. But because he really didn't, it's thrown everything off even further. Now at the rate he's progressing, it looks like Bronny would need two, three, maybe even four years of college to be officially NBA ready. But whether the James family would choose to wait and not rush things is still yet to be seen. And even then, things might not work out because after after high school, nothing's guaranteed. Look back at what happened to Zaire Wade. He did a post-grad year, then his father got him a spot in the G League, to where he averaged 1.8 points a game, got waived, and hasn't been heard from since. Or even Sharif O'Neal, who did go to all four years of college, never got any better, averaged 2 points a game, and is now in the G League, averaging 5 a game. As it turns out, Bronny James' future has become extremely clouded and complicated, and the more worrisome it becomes that he'll have a failed NBA career. As for Bryce James, he just turned 15 years old and hasn't cracked the Sierra Canyon and starting lineup, so it's hard to say where he's really at. Even 24-7 Sports and ESPN have yet to rank him officially, but things are already looking much brighter for him at a much younger age, with scouts saying that Bryce is a better prospect and more naturally gifted than Bronny was. And they might be onto something because Bryce has the ability and confidence to shoot the ball at will. He's much more aggressive and dominant when he needs to be, which is a good sign. And so is the fact that LeBron's gone on record saying Bryce is the best shooter in their household. So all of that as a 6'6", 15-year-old, and those scouts may be right about Bryce James going forward. On top of that, he wouldn't be eligible for the NBA until 2025 anyways, so whether he makes it in time to play with his father in the league is still up in the air, which means there's not nearly as much pressure on him to make it happen. So while for most of their life they seem destined for a great NBA career, things are suddenly looking a lot more complicated.